I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye some Knit Picks Gloss Roving. This fiber is 70% merino wool, 30% Tessa silk top. In a recent video with a different wool silk blend, we created a speckled type colorway using Kool-Aid. Today I want to try to do speckled roving with acid dyes. This is something that I tried in the past when I mixed the dye powder with citric acid and I was going for really, really fine speckles. But I've realized that I should be going for something a little bit heavier, adding on the dry powder, not in huge clumps, but in larger sections so that way we still have small areas of color here on our roving, but it'll be more visible. And so then when this is spun up, when we, if we have smaller patches of color all over the roving, this will add to a lot of blending and mixing of the colors as it's spun, and I think it'll turn out really, really beautiful. Before we jump in any further, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to my lab partner, Kathy. Kathy, thank you so much for supporting this video, and I am really excited to dye this roving for you. Right here I have a basin of water and we're gonna add a little over a quarter of a cup of white vinegar. Now the one concern with dyeing a non-superwash fiber and trying to speckle on it is that uh, speckles and dye binds really quickly to say uh, superwash wool, less quickly to non-superwash wool, and then even less quickly to a wool silk blend like what we have here with this gloss roving. But if there's not a ton of water in the fiber when we go to dye it, uh, then we should be able to get nice splotches of color like we saw in that Kool-Aid video. And I'm really, really excited to give this a shot. Now you might notice that there's a lot of air in the fiber and it's probably gonna take a little bit of time for the liquid to soak in. I will come every once in a while and very gently press to remove the air. With fiber like this that is not soaking up the water super easily, if I was going for a really saturated colorway, then I would want probably want to soak it overnight. But since we're going for speckles and some of this white left behind, this bare color is acceptable, uh, I will soak for a few hours probably, maybe an hour or so, but I'm not worried about having uh, the fiber perfectly saturated all the way through. I would like it more saturated than it is right now, uh, <laughs> but I am not as worried about that. Kathy, I ended up soaking this fiber closer to 24 hours. Uh, I think that I would have been okay doing more like just a couple, two, three hours. Uh, it didn't need as long as we gave it. Um, but now I am putting it onto a, a clean but old towel um, and I am gently pressing out some of the liquid because I don't want to grip it and cause any kind of felting. I could press more water out of it. I do want a, some amount of water in this fiber because uh, I don't care if we get some amount of spread from the speckles, but I do want the dye powder to be able to dissolve. And into our same pre-soak water, I am going to put a skein of Knit Pick Stroll, uh, so that way we can use this as the yarn mop. As we speckle onto the fiber, I will wipe my hands on this between changing colors to leave no dye behind. So this doesn't need to pre-soak for that long. Again, if you don't mind if there is white left behind, the yarn does not need to be 100% saturated. Kathy referenced my flamingo yarn, so I thought it would be fun to pull some of those colors in. I've got our Valentine blush flamingo pink, and uh, we'll use a little bit of tangelo to give a little bit of warmth. And then I also grabbed some pecan brown, um, which 
is probably, Tangelo is probably fairly pigmented, but the pecan brown is also very pigmented, and I wanted something that would bring a little bit more contrast in because the contrast between these colors is very subtle. Now, I think Valentine Blush might end up having some dark specks when I've used it on yarn. I think that that's the color. So we'll see where we end up. Now I am going to extremely carefully layer the fiber on the counter. Here is an end. You can see how compressed it is because it is so wet. Uh, I could have removed more liquid, but you know what? We're not gonna worry about it. All right, since we are playing with dry dye powder, I am wearing gloves, safety glasses, and my deluxe rubber respirator, which I will have all of this linked down in the video description. I'm coming in with the Flamingo Pink, and I am adding the dry powder in little specks. Since the roving is not as wide as it was before it really compressed with the soak and removal, uh, some of this will go across the whole um, section and some won't. I am using the most of the Flamingo Pink and some areas I am speckling on really lightly and some I'm going a lot heavier. But of, as a color, just wiping my fingers on this, this pink is not that pigmented. Uh, so who knows how much color we will want to add. The ones where I'm gonna wanna be really light are that Tangelo and Pecan Brown. I feel like the Valentine Blush and Flamingo Pink are extremely similar. So I'm adding this on. Uh, what was I say? You do want your hands to be completely dry before you go back uh, into your dye container. And so again, I am going, I'm sort of interspersing this with the Flamingo Pink. Uh, so this is going to be very similar. I'll be, I think, probably a little more sporadic with the brown and tangelo. But the difference between what I'm doing here and what I did in the, goodness, the first time I tried to speckle on roving where I used uh, citric acid and I tried to go really, really fine, I think that the difference here is we're going to have small patches of color that will blend out and bring a lot of dimension into our fiber. All right. And yeah, so I would say that the pink, what is it, the, the Valentine blush is a little bit bluer than the flamingo pink. So zooming in, we definitely have little speckles here. The color may spread more, but, and actually, even if it spreads and stays as little speckles, there's another spot I'll zoom into. Even if these speckles stay on the fiber, uh, it's possible that as we fluff the fiber up to make it pretty at the end, that will blend these out a bit and so we'll lose some of this definition that we're seeing right now. But that's okay. The goal here is to create something really fun. Okay, now I've got this Tangelo. And I am being way uh, less... I'm being really, really... Uh, light. I was going to say generous. I'm being less generous with this. It's laying, layering over the pink some, but I'm really only allowing little areas to come in. Even though as I add it a little bit all over. 
I think that this would be spun up to create something so tonal and awesome. Sometimes people ask me why when I speckle, uh, I like to use my fingers versus a shaker or something. And I really like to have that control over where the powder leaves my hand and falls onto the fiber. And I feel like if I'm tapping a shaker, it's really easy to over tap. But when I am dealing with fiber like this, and I'm just taking up a tiny pinch of dye, ooh, I love pecan brown. When I'm taking up a tiny pinch, it's really easy for me to control how much dye I even have in my fingertips to begin with. And then that gives me a different kind of control over how much I am adding. And so this uh, pecan brown, as I, in some areas I'm doing a little bit more, but I'd say of all of the colors, this one is definitely the most pigmented. A lot of times with roving and stuff, I worry about the color going all the way through. And that is not a huge concern for me today because uh, it's okay if there is fiber that doesn't have this color. That'll add to how it thins out. Um, I'm definitely seeing some of these speckles go in and bloom a little bit more as the dye sinks in and expands. You can see the difference with how sharp that pecan brown looks and how a little bit more spread out those pinks look. I think I want to give this a minute or two before we flip it over to dye the other side, um, just to give the colors a little bit of time to sink in. Okay, it's been a few minutes. Now I want to very, very carefully flip as we are flipping, there is a chance that we are rubbing and moving some things more. You saw that little streak just happen. Basically, I'm trying to expose fiber with nothing on it yet. And it's okay if these colors spread and move through a little bit. And now we're gonna dye this other side. I speckled on the same four colors in a very similar pattern. There's some spots where I may have been more heavy handed than I was in the first go around, but I'm really excited with how this is coming together. And please correct me down in the room. <laughs> And please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I've done this more heavy speckling on roving before. I think that, again, I was trying to get super fine speckles, and so I attempted this with dyes mixed with citric acid, but I was going a lot lighter. And so I think that this will probably still blend out and be something that is more pastel overall. But I'm really, really, really excited. Now that I have speckled this other side, this time I'm not really gonna wait. I'm gonna carefully, very carefully pick this up. It's okay that it's touching each other because we've got all these colors all over. And it is very beautiful. I'm gonna go put this in my steamer basket. And as we do that, I'm coming in with our yarn mop that doesn't have as much color on it as I had expected, but we are gonna use this to clean up our counter. Now I do always wipe down, this is just a shower curtain that I use. Uh, I will wipe it down as well with uh, say paper towels and stuff, but why not grab this extra color and I feel like dyeing uh, some bonus yarn in this same colorway so we can keep using that yarn mop. 
I don't want to take the lid off because I don't want to see what's happening under there right now. I am going to wait 30 minutes and then we will peek and see what our roving looks like. I do have, uh, this is just a multi-pot and I have a couple inches of water in the bottom to steam the fiber. I was enjoying this color combination so much, I decided to grab 200 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK. This yarn is 100% superwash merino. And I quickly put zip ties on it and dunked it into that same pre-soak water and then speckled on these same four colors in a very similar way, going heaviest with our flamingo pink and valentine blush and lighter with the tangelo and pecan brown. I wanted to create something that we could use as a comparison point when our other fiber is done steaming. Now, granted, there will be some differences because a 70-30 merino silk that isn't superwash, plus it's roving, so there's no twist to add any resist, will look different from a superwash yarn, but I just thought that it would be really fun and I really, really like these colors together. The 30 minutes are up, and now, ooh, this is really, really pretty. I'm gonna zoom in here because I know once we wash it and the fiber moves a bit, we will probably lose some specks. There's a lot of splotch going on, but there are some speckles right there. I think that that's from that Valentine blush where I have seen some speckles come out before. Um, but, oh, this is really, really, really fun. So what I'm gonna do now is we are going to carefully pick up, set this aside without moving it too much. We're gonna set this aside to cool completely. And now we will steam set uh, that yarn that we dyed. And off camera, I'll wipe down the canter, counter with our yarn mop. And again, we'll also steam set the yarn mop for 30 minutes in the steamer basket after the speckled yarn is done. It has been 30 minutes and I went heavy on here like I did with the other one, but we have more discreet speckles. Uh, and yeah, it'll just be interesting to compare this like immediately off the drying rack and things like that. But once everything is cool, then we will go and wash it. We are gonna wash all of the yarn first because honestly, it is easier and it will be faster. Uh, I tend to go slower when it comes to roving, mainly because, well, I don't want to treat it like this and wrap it around my hands. You want to be a lot more gentle uh, with your roving. So I am going to come in and add a little bit of some clear dish soap here. I really like this color combination. I really like this color combination, especially adding that tangelo, which is a very reddish orange or like an orangey pink. But I think that that warmth with that then cool tone brown is beautiful. So anyway, I'm not seeing any bleeding. So I'm gonna rinse out the soap, pop this in my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Now it is time to wash the roving, but I do want to let you appreciate how speckly it really is. And I'm really, really impressed by that. But again, as the fibers move, we will probably see some of these really sharp, defined areas that have speckles that will probably get a lot blown out. Which isn't a problem. Ooh, speaking of blown out, the bottom, those colors got blown out. It's not a problem for uh, these little patches of color to become bigger. As I mentioned, things are going to blend as it gets spun. This is so beautiful. I just wanted to point out that we did have those really, really fine speckles and spots. You can see like the little polka dots on here. Um, and, oh, I'm so happy. And the water is really, really cold. <laughs> um, it is really cold. Okay, I'm gonna let this soak in here for a little bit. I don't think I'm, eh, 
we'll use a little bit of soap. I'll add just like a tiny bit of the soap. We didn't see bleeding on our other yarn, so therefore I think that it shouldn't be a problem here. I'm just lightly bringing that soap through to just lightly soak. It is so pretty. All right, I'll come back in a few minutes and we'll continue the wash. Let's see, I am not seeing any bleeding. So what we're gonna do, very carefully, pour out the water, then we will gently rinse out the soap by, I'm not, I'm trying to not run the water directly on the fiber, but I'm gonna add the fresh water, let it sit for a couple minutes, and then do that probably one more time before putting the fiber through my spin dryer and hanging it up to dry. Now, a lot of times fiber might look very compressed after drying, but then with a tiny bit of fluffing, then it's all fluffy and pretty again. So I'm gonna try to make sure and show uh, how it looks one, before I have fluffed it or really manipulated it at all because uh, I feel like a lot of these areas where we saw specks are already more blown out and bigger uh, now than they were when we looked at it just before putting in the yarn, the fiber here in the wash. Here is the finished dry roving and I have not yet fluffed it up intentionally. It has fluffed up a bit just from drying and already you can see that the speckles are not as sharp as they were. So even say like right here, this might have been an area where we had sharper speckles. It's still speckled. There's still some tiny little spots, but overall it is definitely more splotched, which again, when it's spun, will be gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, but I mean, I think that it's because when you have, ooh, here's still a sharp little speck right there, but if we fluff and move it at all, you can see that it expanded. And so that is just the nature of trying to speckle on fiber. Uh, but I still think that these will blend out with spinning in a very, very gorgeous way. Uh, the Merino Silk Blend has held up really well. It doesn't need very much fluffing. There's no like real felting, but I do like to do just a little fluff just to make it a little plumper and prettier. Uh, ooh, and let's look and see. So some of these specks are really just on the surface and are really, really shallow in the fiber. And others where the dye was a little heavier probably go a little deeper. Uh, Kathy, I'm gonna be really curious to hear when you spin this how deep and shallow some of these colors are. I really hope that you will share your finished yarn with me because I would really love to see it. I think that this fiber is absolutely gorgeous and I really need to play with this more in the future. I had doubts. I had doubts with speckling on roving, but now that I've played with it, I need to repeat this again on some that I'm gonna spin myself. So, this is not the last time you'll see me try speckling on roving. Ooh, neon! I should do neon colors on this, on this. Editing Rebecca, make a note. This is so pretty. I, ooh, I am so excited. I mean, I know, and again, I will insert a picture of some Kool-Aid speckled roving I did in the past, and then what it looked like spun, where the colors really blended out and ended up being pretty pastel. There's a chance that this might end up looking fairly subtle and pastel. And so maybe what I would need to do in the future is go a little bit heavier even on the areas or really sort of tap the fiber of the various speckled things in so it goes in more layers. But it doesn't seem to be that shallow, so we'll see. We also dyed some yarn with this colorway. We have our yarn mop here uh, that I use to wipe my hands on. And part of the reason I think that I decided to dye more yarn is that 
when I was doing the yarn mop, there wasn't enough color on it and I wanted more color on it. But also I wanted to create a speckled colorway using the same colors. This is Swish DK, which is 100% superwash merino. And it is something that is a little harder to get sharp speckles on than Stroll, which has, because it's fingering weight, has a bit of a tighter twist, but I wanted something to have that we could compare to the fiber. Uh, so that way, which I'll do in a moment, so that way we could take a look at the difference between the speckles on yarn versus roving. And the real reason why the speckles stay sharp on yarn is because that twist doesn't allow the fibers to move as much and so therefore that twist stays sharp. Here is our speckled yarn next to the roving and you can see how sharp these speckles still are. It almost makes the roving look like it's out of focus because of how much they have blown out. And not all the speckles were necessarily this sharp when we did this roving, but they were sharper than they are now and we did have some elements where we could see those specs. So I'm really glad that I did this side by side. To be fair, this is superwash, this is merino silk. So there are differences in the fiber that could cause differences in how you perceive things, but we did see speckles here. So gosh, maybe I need to try to speckle some gloss. I don't think, I know I tried it with Kool-Aid once in a Hanukkah, but I'm not sure uh, if I've tried to like speckle on a silk blend with dry powder before. Kathy, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. And again, I really hope you're gonna love the roving. If you would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner, get shout outs and yarn or roving from an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, you can check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop down in the video description. If you're interested in a different yarn base than what I might have listed, uh, please send me a message in advance and I can check and see what I might have available. But please uh, check in advance versus requesting something that I may or may not have uh, at the time you check out. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and boy am I not done speckling on roving. As I said, I am feeling very inspired and excited about this. So gosh, I think in another, I, I've been wanting to do another, more spinning videos and just haven't made the time for me to do that and film things like that. And so if you'd be interested in a spinning to, or a dyeing to finished yarn with a, you know, a spinning vlog in there with some speckled roving, I think that that is something that I really want to do. So let me know in the comments what you think. And while you're at it, please make sure you're subscribed and you have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. Thank you so much for watching.